everybody. Casey Cox here with Sports Science Solutions. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about our most recent case study. A uh, very interesting uh, case study that we just went through with a hockey player uh, who's trying to get uh, signed by a couple of Division One colleges right now. And what we were able to do uh, is take this player whose coach affectionately referred to him as a kid who's wearing uh, lead slippers and uh, try to make him quicker on his first step. Um, so we went through a series of off-ice exercises with him where we tried to tap into neurological engagements in his brain and get the right muscles pattern uh, firing that we needed to see uh, on the ice. Um, this was what we had seen um, through our biomechanical testing, um, that he wasn't engaging the proper muscle patterns while he was skating. So we went through a series of off-ice corrections where, again, we tried to engage the proper neural patterns, created some axial stability, uh, and was able to take him on the ice in a half hour, provide him with the same external cues, um, and see over a 30% gain in his initial step power. Um, so it was a pretty incredible find, and uh, take a look at our okay, data. So what we're going to start by looking at our hip accelerator graphs. And what we're looking at here is basically three different colors, and each one of these colors is representing a dimension of movement. So when we're doing a 3D capture, we're seeing the three-dimensional description of how the body's interacting with itself. In this case, we have hip accelerators. So we are most interested in this case in first step power. So what we need to find out is how much energy is being exerted from a vector standpoint down into the ice. And that's going to tell us how much power this player is generating at any given time during the stride. So we're going to pare this graph down real quick and show you exactly what we look at uh, in this big graph to find out how to optimize a skater. Okay, so we've taken away two dimensions of movement, and what we're left with are the green lines, which are showing us vertical acceleration vectors. So what we're looking at here is the first lines in this graph, and really for that first big acceleration, this is showing us how much power he's exerting in the first step. So I've marked them off with those red lines, and what you see is that we have a 25 degree push downward into the ice on his first step. And that's where we will say that this player is far below average in terms of where he's playing and how much force he's exerting. When you consider that your average Division One player is exerting around 50 degrees of force down into the ice. Okay, so now we have the next graph to look at here. And I have to admit, when we went into this venture with this player, I was expecting to see some gains in his acceleration patterns based on the work that we did off ice. I mentioned when we took him off ice, we spent about a half hour working through some engagement exercises that were training his brain how to neurologically find the muscle groups that we were trying to engage when he was skating. This was going to give him more stability and more strength naturally without doing any type of lifting or exercising, stretching, any of that stuff. Okay, what we found when we came back on the ice is this graph here. And you'll see in the same depiction, what we have for an acceleration is now 35 degrees. Okay, so he's actually gained 40% um, of his overall acceleration in that first step, just in a half hour of working through neurological engagement and getting better biomechanics. So we're able to measure that by taking a look at this graph. Now, what we're going to show you next is a graph that is depicting what happened after we engaged the same secondary cues that we were using off the ice when we came back onto the ice. Okay, so that last graph was showing what happened when we put him on the ice and just allowed him to take the exercise drills that we had done off the ice and apply them naturally and not necessarily think about anything. And that's when we saw those initial gains. What we saw here was what happened after we had done another five or so minutes of talking about the secondary cues that we engaged off the ice to get him using the proper muscles. And what we see here now is 38 degrees of force moving into the ice. So this was our best capture with him after that. And it shows that he was able to not only take the things naturally off the ice and apply them, but then to also think about them and get even more out. So at the beginning of the day, he was 25 degrees away from being an average Division One skater in terms of output of power. And now in just under or just over a half an hour, he was able to more than halfway close that gap. Um, so, you know, another six to eight weeks of working under these parameters and this player should go far ways in terms of closing the gap and making himself to be less of a lead-footed player and more of a Division One skater. You know, what we're really excited about is the possibility that we could potentially help an entire generation of athletes train in a more efficient and more effective way. What we've seen in other fields of study, particularly golf and now into baseball, is that 3D biomechanics is not only a more efficient way to help athletes get to where they want to be, 
but it takes them beyond parameters that we even thought they could perform at. And when we look at the performance of elite level golfers now, the reason they're reasoning, reaching rather these levels of performance earlier in life is the fact that they're using training methodologies such as 3D biomechanics that are helping them be more efficient and more effective. The fact that we're now using this in hockey um, is really exciting for me because it's, it's, uh, it's a time when we can really take the game to another level and start to show players a way to use their bodies that are going to help them from A, getting injured, and uh, B, help them see a, a level of performance that they never thought was possible. So uh, if you're interested in what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. Uh, find us on social media. Look us up. Uh, we'd be happy to take a look and uh, see if there's any way we can help you.